He stops himself just short of saying that Fedora is not a real distro. Now, now to or is not a serious suggestion. <laughs> and welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, on tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. A Vinstone, here at LGC Actual. That man up there, half man, half Canadian, that is Jordan Zwang. And... All the way across Oceania. It's the Pedro Mateus. Join us live. Hello. With you, Chaperon <laughs> Dynamic. Watching this across on Twitch. Australia? Helping Australia. Britannia. Oceania? Yeah. Yeah. Helping us form. Cocaine Voltron. Yeah. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. We've got to do that, man. Um, yep. we got a packed up show for everyone tonight, don't we? Jeez. Lots to talk about. We do. Um, yeah. Go to, stay tuned. We're, we're, if you're tuning in, like Linus Sebastian said some stuff about Linux, and I have a different. We do too. So stick around yes. for the news segment. Yeah. We're going to get to that, uh, guaranteed. Uh, have we played around with anything new? I've been playing around with. Um, I, I finished up a video that took me like a lot longer than I wanted it to, but I was really glad I got it together. Uh, did I? Yeah. I got this. Uh, if you're a patron, it is currently up for you right now. If you want to see an old man play with old hardware, that is my 301 compeller. Very interesting piece of kit that I just sit down here in the studio and we turn some knobs. and like, what do you do? Speak to me. And it kind it's of compelling. It, it, it compelled me to make the video. Compelling. I thought it was interesting <laughs> using it right now. But yeah. Uh, uh, outside of that, same old, same old. Uh, how about you, Jordan? Anything fun? I- I had to chase a squirrel in my house today. Oh man! I, yeah, I, I, I got, I got, woke, I got woken up by that. Like, there's a squirrel in the house. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I go downstairs. <laughs> lo, lo and behold, yeah, there, there is a squirrel trapped in my house. I have no idea how it got there. I, gotta I have to go you, look for holes um, now. Like in the relationship, it was there. Was that 100 percent probability? Or like, all right, what, what, what's really afoot here? I'm like, hmm, is it going to be yeah, a there, squirrel or like? So that Alex is up. So here, here's the thing. I know there are <laughs> raccoons and skunks in the area because I run into them a lot. Mm-hmm. So what could have been a squirrel may have been a skunk that snuck in. So I'm happy ah, that it was the former. Right. Ooh, how would you be? I don't, <laughs> There's I don't a black and white squirrel in here. <laughs> that is, I do not want to think yeah. about that, man. I, I think the house belongs to the skunk at that point. Right. Like It's like, okay, code of fire, reset. Y- um, yep. <laughs> it's yours now, buddy. Have fun. <laughs> Pedro, have you bought an additional laptop? I did actually. Uh, it's a um, what is this? A compact mini three eleven. I was about it's, to say that uh, thing is itsy bitsy. Huh? It's a twelve inch uh, netbook from back in the day, twenty eleven specifically. Okay, and I only uh, got it because of um, what this sticker down here represents. It's because you hate dun, freedom. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Nvidia. Oh, you Nvidia yes. shells. How dare you call yourself a Linux user? <laughs> Now, now he, I, 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 had, I, had, I had a AMD laptop, about that. so okay. <laughs> I, had, I had a question about that. Do you have to use Nouveau in order for that to even dream of working on Linux, or does the legacy drivers cover that? Ooh. The legacy drivers, yes. The three o four drivers specifically. What? Okay. Uh, I, I, okay. Ooh. Next question that's coming up. That still compiles with a modern kernel. Or are you running what? Uh, I'm not running anything because I need a power supply for it first. Mm. Because the listing was just for the netbook. <laughs> I 23 think, pounds to be fair so i think if you're on the legacy branch though that like that's meant to just like build on like the barest kernel interface yes. or some shit yeah hmm. that's why they update the legacy um drivers every now and then it's like okay you can build this now with the long-term support kernel which i think is 510 oh so probably yeah that I, one. I, I, <laughs> something like that I, I didn't even tangle with it with um in our production of jackbox for the dawn the studio it's got the quadro in it like nuvo work uh, does it boot we're good i don't need x on this i mean yeah like even for basic duty shit like nuvo yeah you, 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 work. On, a, on a headless box you need a display like a horse on uh, <laughs> yes you do <laughs> uh, damn it the horse head Segway. is all the way over there i can't reach it it's it's so far away it's the steam lex update of the week there we go there we go you gotta slip that in so (laughs) get the fuck out of here 
Charles. Quit being like that, man. That horse loves you. And I don't love it. <laughs> it's a very enough. abusive relationship. Something uh, we want to love is the Steam Deck. We got some number digits. We got some benchmarks showing 60 FPS gaming experience with reasonable eye candy. What do we think about reasonable eye candy? What what constitutes that? This is from Tom's Hardware. Oh, this is going to be in our show notes after the fact. Well, I'm going to give you the numbers. I'll give you the numbers. Uh, the ones that you're probably going to be interested in. Dota, what's that running? 80 low. Metro 2077, 20 on high. Okay, it's running the latest Doom at 60 on medium. And they even stuck a mm-hmm. thermometer on it. It gets up to about 42.6 on the back when it's given the business. But, That's you not know, too bad. yeah, after about three hours of playing, uh, this was kind That's of interesting. positively but, cool compared to laptops. Th- this <laughs> is kind of interesting. Uh, battery life. Battery life is something I, you know... Valve's like, you know, but you, you do the same thing that you're going to do with a laptop. It's like, it'll run for four weeks with the brightness set to point one, yeah. And yeah, with, with a black screen. And right, yeah, right, like, right. Um, no, no. So they're, they're suddenly like playing a game, like three hours of playing, uh, and they didn't specify which one. It dropped from 100 to 46%. So, hmm. That's about on par with the Switch. Five, six hours, depending mm, on what you're doing. You, yeah. you got to think, you know, uh, that that's the reason, but that, that, that's more than a luggable, you know, you can get to back and that's, that's like just straight up gaming time too. Now, something that I found interesting was, uh, th- there was one spike crash, uh, that they encountered with proton. And of course that was running cyberpunk. So good work proton. Team. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're very much on parity with windows with that one. I mean, yeah, no, no, no amount of dick fix is going to fix that. Right. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. No. I, I, yeah, the, 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 the the battery gains I'm very very interested in because like yeah like you said it's not going to be very useful as a portable system if it's like yeah you can run Doom three you can run Doom on like medium or whatever as long as you're chained to a wall. Um, one thing that one thing uh, one thing the article is kind of sparse on. Oh, you actually got Google Translate to work. It would just not be. It would not play nice with me for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, uh, there there's no on. Uh, there's no indication on what like resolution this is running on. I'm going to assume it's 800p because that's the device's native resolution. But the article does say like, oh, yeah, it'll do like 8K 60 hertz with a dock if you're playing V, 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 But that's about it. It's getting like 46. <laughs> Even then, I doubt it. <laughs> what well, do you yeah, know? Uh, they did point the uh, little thermal uh, uh, like uh, infrared thermometer at it. There you go. Uh, and it was, yeah, 40 something around the back and 29C around the handles, which is about r- right if you're holding something in your sweaty, sweaty hands. It's going to get to about that temperature very, very quickly. Uh, and uh, assuming that they're running it at 1280 by 800, that gives me a basis of comparison for the Ryzen laptop. So we'll see just how much better the um, there we go. The there Ryzen we go. 2500U <laughs> or the new uh, Ryzen I, APU I, is compared to the 2500 year. In, in that picture, what we're looking at is the Steam Deck with a little mini keyboard and a gerbil. I want to see some people at the coffee shop when I think it's open back up dressed as lumberjacks with like on their fixies playing Dota oh, 2 no. just like that. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you also got to lug like a, like a 20 inch monitor with you too. So you just, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, that might be that might not be the uh, only portable that Valve has oh, in no, the pipe. Maybe. So uh, I've seen things you haven't believed by looking through Steam VR code. Well, I haven't, but one of the one of the enterprising people uh, dicking through the Steam VR code is Brad Lynch um, was digging through, and he discovered some references to a piece of hardware called Deckard uh, in the Steam VR API. Uh, now you know what we, a Deckard we, we, may look like. Yeah, what what just looks like Harrison Ford. You just put oh. an entire Harrison Ford body on your face. <laughs> it's, it's it's like life size blow up Antonio. It's gonna make Banders. going outside interesting. Yeah. Uh but yeah, we, we, we have we have heard tell rumors hearsay of a Valve Vulp standalone uh VR thing, uh similar to the Oculus Quest. I I don't know. Here's the thing. Valve has been known to leave red herrings in code because when you have long lived projects that don't always seem see completion, shit gets recycled sometimes. I so, was about to say, I mean, uh, do you think it's more red herrings or Valve just lost interest in whatever that was? Uh, I, I, when, when I say red herring, I don't mean like deliberate red herring. I oh. mean more like this This was like, again, it got this bit An of code artifact. for whatever project Deckard <laughs> got reused 
and they didn't bother changing the fucking library name because that's dumb, right? Like there, there's, there's definitely a lot of stuff like that that could happen. Although um, we we're seeing now that valve is putting a lot of effort into their hardware stack, making sure that like games run performantly on mobile or on their mobile platform, at least maybe that speaks to some standalone device coming out in the future. Yeah. And it makes sense if the uh, Gabe gear does well enough why not just have a head mounted Gabe gear? Because that is effectively what this is. Or, or, or one that like, works in conjunction. Be. Like, like yeah. uh, you have the, and you have the Gabe gear and then you have like a PSVR thing where they ship the entire separate console. Yep. With. You just stream the, uh, the video to the display and it does the decoding there because it's got a pretty powerful APU. See, I think by this itself. is all a lot to do about <laughs> nothing because like the portable um, VR headset, it's, it's going to come with a kit and it's going to have a steam deck and it's going to have some of that double-sided Velcro stuff. So you just, and a big old needle to stick oh, in the back a, of your head. It's a Google cardboard. Now I, I was half expecting you to say that it came no. with a bike. No, but <laughs> that listen, man, that is for advanced users only. <laughs> Yeah, Down or, or for cyclists. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that, I'm going to say that. This is where you start to get my interest, Valve. And here's another thing. If they can make a... Because you got to look at um, like the Index and the HTC Vive and stuff like that. That's not cheap kit. This is not. There's no way around it. I mean, you have to get bought in on that. And Facebook's got... We're going to be talking about the new stick around. Um, the little, you know, like two, $300 one. Do you think Valve could make something like that? Something more in that price range? Because they already have that Entry chip. level. Now. Yeah. Yes. They're going to have they the could. that's yeah. going to be but in the um, <laughs> Steam Deck. Maybe they can utilize that, take advantage of it, and uh, th- then you get my interest when it's wireless and I don't need lighthouses set up and it, I can just kind of roll in and smash it's stuff possible. in my room accidentally. It's, po- it's possible, but I see Valve trying to cater more to the more... I, 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 I loathe as I am to use the term serious gamer market, right? Like uh, not, not necessarily looking at people who are uh, looking at entry level stuff. Cause like, yeah, yeah look, the, look the at the enthusiasts, the ones willing yeah. to spend that kind of money. Yeah. Pro because gamers. I yeah, just, I no, just the, if the index saber, was evidence of, of anything is that the, the, the price, if this comes to pass, it's going to be the prohibitive mm. to put it nicely. <laughs> Well, there's uh, no country for old games. No, no, no. See, uh, one of the things that the speedrunning community and the modding community uh, all seem to agree on is that it's great to have access to old versions of a specific game because it means that you can do something with a specific version. Pedro, if which you, you can do that, do people with will the uncontrollably ones. download games, whatever that means. Yes, out of control. because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't uh, spend, what, what was it? I, did, I think I used like two terabytes of uh, my internet uh, bandwidth last month just downloading games. But hey, the, <laughs> uh, the way that Steam allowed you to um, download those old versions of the games is changing. Now, uh, it they still, from what this uh, article comes from the, uh, the Steam database, and what they're saying is that basically it still doesn't allow developers to completely remove old versions. Uh, the, all the old versions are still available. It's just for the end users. So if you, as an end user, want to download an old game and you're trying to use the old way that you did it with the uh, Steam console, it now, um, it or right now, currently, it still doesn't require the um, depot Branch code. password. Yeah, branch password. But in the future, it might because that that's a thing that was introduced. And Valve, uh, uh, what was it, September 28th, they actually said, we are actually not planning to disable downloading old builds. What we're working on is an approach to handling edge cases for unowned content. So they're basically trying to curb people using the manifests or the Steam console to download games that they don't have that they didn't buy the license for in Steam. So that is basically their way to attempt to circumvent this. But SteamDB no. seems skeptical that this statement actually means what Valve is trying to imply that it means because what they're doing is directly contradicting that. So so, so one, one thing the article does bring up, though, and I think that may be more the root of it, is that people were using this to get access to pre-release versions of software that may or may not be released. And so 
that that's like um I, I I'm curious what kind of like service level agreement Valve has with a bunch of these publishers regarding like how they can host their stuff. But yeah, like the the technical the technical data behind it is like yeah they've introduced this new API call that takes a password parameter. Uh, it's being used in the Steam beta right now. It's not being used in the stable client. So their API gateway is still responding to uh, branch requests for non-standard ones um, without a password. I don't know, though. It begs the question, should Steam provide an option to roll back to specific versions? I can see that being a problem with, like, Payday or something that has, like, a zillion fucking updates. But I don't know. Maybe maybe that's something to consider. Well, there's definitely a lot of games. I mean... Would this affect the average Steam user? Probably not. Um, no. No. A lot of you are like, wait, you can do that? Like, yes, you can. <laughs> there has been a couple of situations where there would be like a certain version that would work on Linux that they were working on like a private beta or something like that. Or we'd have to roll it back to a particular version to make sure something worked. But outside of that, day in and day out, you, you don't ever pay attention to stuff like this. And I can't. I haven't messed around with the Steam command thing since like Proton since they added the thing to Proton to where you could just download the game. Mm-hmm. No. And I, honestly, I, I as someone who does very much care about game conservation and I do really like older games that are no longer available because hey, guess what? The publisher decided to pull an EA and be a dick about it and just kill the game listen, altogether. Man, listen, it had Papa Roach in it. We couldn't have it on store. <laughs> Cut my life into pizza, <laughs> yeah, man. It's uh, my plastic fork. I put over 1,100 hours uh, over the past year and a half into a dead game, Need for Speed World. And that was made EA if it was up to them. That game would have been long dead and buried, but the community still had it, and they made something with it. If Valve is playing into the hands of these kind of publishers, that's bad. First off, I'm going to go out and go out on a very short, sturdy limb and saying Valve ain't been to no damn publisher, developer, or whatever. Period. That that hasn't even crossed anyone's mind. Also, <laughs> let's look at it historically. Um, Valve wants you to play the latest versions. Uh, example: Let's drag out CS:GO. So that <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> But that, that is one of their games. They have a vested interest in that. The others, it's just money. I, it, it, well, I mean, it's it's edge cases, right? Because, again, your average user is not going to be a speedrunner. Your average user is not going to be someone who's going to be super into the mods. I mean, for specific games, that may differ because of the audience for a given game. I don't know. It's 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 weird. I, I agree that there should be some function within Steam to handle this. Um, but I mean, what, what people are resorting to doing right now is hacky and like Valve is within the rights of saying like, no, we own our API. You have no right to access just shit randomly off of it. So, uh, I, don't, I don't know. We will see, but Indeed. Steam client beta is updated and we got some good news. Yes. Oh my God. Have you tried to start steam and then had to download 6 billion fucking Every shaders single time. or <laughs> compile We're looking 6 at you billion fucking dead. shaders? Yep. Well, lo and behold, they're attempting to address the uh, the size of these uh, Vulcan pre-cached descents. They're splitting them up, so they're going to be uh, doing it based on Proton version and whatever the hell they consider driver capabilities. I imagine it's just like a list of Vulcan extensions or some shit that your GPU supports, but we we don't know what the actual uh, the actual criteria is. So hopefully, this should result in fewer downloads, less shader chugging, and we were saying like this is definitely fucking something that needs to be done before the Steam Deck launches. Yes. So I think this is this is them like okay now here's here's the thing because we 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 know specifically what shaders we need to ship for the Steam Deck because they all have the same fucking hardware. So whoop, yep. I, I'm in the beta. I loaded it up and it it got rid of the because probably for the entirety of last month every time I launched Steam was between sixty and eighty megabytes of shaders were downloaded for Left 4 Dead 2 just that was part of normal launch and everything else you know got a couple of mags and all that i hit this and pay attention though because the data sets are going to start from scratch with this it's going to wipe because they're rebuilding this once everything's synced back up i'm fine because i immediately went into the uh days gone just to see because that one was very chuggy until it got everything sorted out worked fine and when i start steam now i'm not seeing that so, and one thing I noticed is when you're launching games, especially Proton games, that it always did. What are you the doing watching me launch games? Shaders. Yes, go figure. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> but oh, yeah, but, uh, when you actually launch a uh, 
when you used to launch Proton games like compiling Vulcan shaders, compiling Vulcan shaders. That was annoying. Now, I think I saw that window show up once. So, mm. I I think they got it. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. So two, they, they, they do have two other changes in here that of are of some material consequence. Apparently, the Pipewire desktop capture not as ready for prime time as uh, they had hoped. <laughs> Oh, what? So, um, you mean yeah. everybody in the history of ever didn't like, oh, you guys are going to have fun around. Um, well, I mean, now, now you got to launch it with dash pipe wire to uh, enable it explicitly. But it's good that they're actually trying to, you know, put stuff oh, no, out. It's 100% it. fantastic that it's there. Um, I think, yes, yes, that was a bit overzealous of like, this is. Well, I mean, that, that's how you get the feedback, right? And if you're enrolling in the beta, you should expect some level of instability. That that yeah. comes with the territory, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, the other thing that they did, which is kind of nice, is uh, if they detect uh, game files have been corrupted, it will only try to download the corrupted parts of the files. It won't try to re-download the entire big thing, which for some big map files and other large file formats might be a little better on your internet connection, which is Oh, nice. that's awesome. When you do like a file integrity check and it's like, oh yeah, this is, the, but here, we're going to have to download this other 90 gigs. <laughs> it does the yeah, payday it, 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 to for Linux. Oh, gotta download the whole thing now. Oh. Man, man there, there's a there's a lot of bad shit that Payday Two for Linux is doing. That these two stories are kind of like. But anyway, anyways, let's let's get fucked. Couple of new games. Yes, Fucktopia. Yes, we've covered the first one and the second one. Hey, wouldn't you know it? The third one. The trilogy. It's, out. it's an early access. Yes, uh, it's an early access. Uh, when I put it in the notes, it wasn't even in early access. It was just the page was up. It's like, okay, I guess we're doing the third. And this one, it's a um, roguelike shooter type of situation. Uh, so I was thinking like Fucktopia Throne or Enter the Fucktopia, something like that. Um, but enter, enter the fuck? I'm okay with it. <laughs> I'm actually okay with this. Unlike certain other series, Biscuits come, comes to mind. Those games cost like 20 bucks each now. I don't know what the hell's going on there. But this one, this one I'm absolutely okay with. Uh, you can see a developer j who just came up with a basic like framework for the uh, sprites and the general theme of the games. And he's just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. And I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, go, going from More brawler to going from brawler to twin stick is definitely a bold move. Uh, but again, it's Fucktopia. It's about a four-armed fat hillbilly in his quest to punch through the world. Where's the eye that, though? I, the the hey big man, eyeball listen, with the thing. <laughs> dare, dare not question such genius in game design. <laughs> all right. So I want to point out that this this is this is somebody like. Came up with the idea, he's got some sprites, he's playing with it, which we 100% we support. Um, this game, out of all games, has online multiplayer. Now, yeah, yeah, <laughs> if this guy can do it, like, right, and like, kudos, the grammar step by step is getting better on each release on the Steam store page. Uh, good, good work there. Mm -hmm. Now, the only thing I'll say negative about this is it's like it's he's he's learning about procedural generation uh levels mm. so yes <laughs> just trying that. out different genres mm. seeing what works seeing what doesn't now it's a uh enter the gungeon nuclear throne type of situation it's okay all mm -hmm. right <laughs> yeah. i'm down with that twin stick fuck twin so, fuck stick uh one thing i've been paying attention to is our battle chess uh, yes. uh, on reddit because th there's been a great game going right now they haven't formed the ultra mega chess tron or pistol right. chess board yet but it is starting to being delightful to watch, which I was like, okay, can you really gamify that? This, this got my attention. It, it, it genuinely did because it's chess, but with battling. Yeah. So now, it, now we see the dominoes fall like a house of cards. Checkmate. <laughs> yeah. So some, someone decided to turn chess into fucking slay the spire because they got high and watched that Futurama episode. Yeah, no, it's pawn, pawn barian. Um, where you are a pawn and you play cards that move your dude around like, uh, like a chess, uh, like on a chessboard, and you try and yep. solve puzzles. It's a little auto, it's a little auto chessy, uh, but it's, yeah, but I don't, I don't know. Like my brain is struggling to process what the chess card game aspect. So that kudos, like, kudos, um, J4NW, kudos. <laughs> it's like into the breach, but you know, even more chess-like because you're literally playing with the rules of chess. Yeah, like, let's just drop the pretense. I like it. It's yeah, just completely drop the whole thing altogether. Isn't it? No, it's just a, a barbarian that 
moves like the chess pieces that you pick from the cards down below. It's like, okay, fair enough. Give me. Now, now <laughs> I, I, give I, I me. wonder, I, I saw some shit. I wonder if they'll, they'll throw some left cur- cur- uh, left cur- left turns. Like they give you some fucking Mahjong tiles or a mm-hmm. domino or something that oh, you can. Just give you a check of- <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What do I do with this? Anything yeah, you just, want. Just, they, they, they just give you like a fucking Uno card or something. You're just Uzi. like. Uh. <laughs> Plus four. What the fuck? Well done. And currently you can grab a demo of it and just go play around with it. it yeah. Like, that's two genres. I mean, maybe if they get some boxing in there, I'll be a little more excited. Under, no, it needs to be underwater. Underwater chess boxing. Ah, yes. Go. Ah, that classic. <laughs> you want to do something traditional. Understood. Understood. You yep. want to get to it. So last time. Was it last week or week before last? Um, last week, yep. Okay, Jordan asked a question and spoke it into reality. Uh, but yeah. he said, uh, Vermintide 2. And I'm like, oh, right. Why don't we ever play that? Because uh, easy anti-cheat. And yeah. if you don't know, last week, the big news was Steam hooking up with Epic and having sexy time. So Epic came out and said, hey, it's a checkbox now for developers if you want to enable the ability for people to play and use easy anti-cheat via Proton for the Windows titles under Linux, it's now an option for you. To which Jordan was like, "Yo, yeah, yo, g- give me, give me some of that uh, Vermintide too. You know, you know, Battle Eyes doing it too. So, you know, I, I, you know, I have a history of speaking the worst possible things into existence and following the <laughs> tradition. Someone posted on, I think it was Ju- Julia posted on the EAC forums for or on the forums for um, Vermintide too. Hey, uh, you know." Epic has added EAC support for YN Proton, and it's a deck box. So are you going to be opting into this? Are we going to be able to play, uh, are we going to be able to play Vermintide 2 under Proton or YN under Linux? To which they say, get fucked, go suck an egg. <laughs> um, well, more, more more along the lines of like, oh, well, you see, it's another platform we need to support, We even if we click a box we're still going to need to fully QA it and blah 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 so we're not we're not looking at implementing easy anti-cheat at this time so now I, I look forward to the incipient dick sucking to get developers to fucking click a box because now it, like it, the, there's no excuse your QA can just be like yo we set up a branch here go check it out users get back to us uh, man that's, that's going to cost millions of dollars in QA man hours we're going to start an entire new wing in a department but it does bring up a very fair question kids it really does because you know I'm thinking from the developer's point of view if I click that box like here have at a- am I just like free of any and all support obligations like yo I did it not not my problem not my problem and to that I asked hey where should those support requests go and Pedro Pedro was a uh, pretty quick on get yeah get up issues which I'm like <laughs> yes that is correct that is the right answer however however where will a non insignificant amount of those requests go <laughs> and yes that is correct man you know Linux users running their Linux boxes from the Linux store down on Linux Boulevard they're gonna head right over to the forums just being honest because we've all seen it. We've all been in the forums and it wasn't about EAC. It was about another issue. I'm like, why don't you go help and put that on the Proton? Imagine trying to get your freshly minted Windows user with their Steam Deck to use fucking GitHub. Just set on that. Set on that while Pedro um, (laughs) regales you with uh, tales of other things. Yeah, no. Valve, when Proton was first released, Valve did specifically say all issues that you encounter with Proton needing to go on GitHub, just start a new issue. Or nowadays, just control F to highlight the uh, search bar and uh, type the name of the game. And there will be an issue open with the name of that game. Uh, the um, the big one really does seem to be, for Vermintide 2 specifically, is uh, the QA bits. Like, okay, here's the thing. We're Linux users. We're used to people not QAing shit. When it comes to Linux, even the games that have actual Linux versions, we've seen it. How dare you go buy another copy of the game that's busted. (laughs) So here's, here's what you do with the QA. You test what you already have to make sure it didn't break. Did it not break? Is everything still running? Cool. That's all we need. Let us play your game. Fucking just let us play your game. Can't be Mm -hmm. done. And and so and to and to your to your point, Pedro, Valve has actually done a pretty j- good job of throwing it back to the developers when they're saying like, "Yo, this isn't a proton problem. We took a crack at it. Your game is busted. We're implementing everything yep. correctly. We have a workaround that kind of works. 
maybe, but your shit's busted. You need to fix it. So I, I can definitely see why Valve would want to absorb those support requests. <laughs> then Cyberpunk 2077 showed up. Yeah, right. <laughs> Knock the... F- I mean, but I mean, even, even even Valve was like, yeah, if you want to refund that, refund that shit, man. It's busted. I don't know. I, what, what I really hope doesn't happen, and I'm going to speak another awful thing into existence right now, Yay. is um, once they flip the switch... Are they going to be like, you Linux users better shut your goddamn gobs or we're going to untick a switch? Oh, yeah. I, I hope I hope it doesn't I come to I think that. Oh, if man. they want to be, uh, you know, crucified. Sure. Well, okay. <laughs> all, all of the metrics change because in a traditional environment, like let's say right now we're still hovering around that 1%. They mm-hmm. uncheck it and they're like, and what are you going to do? 1%. We're mm-hmm. not worried about you. Again, this entire argument, this entire situation gets turned on its head, Oregon. Once you start seeing numbers like twenty percent, twenty five percent, then you get a you can't just haphazardly yeah. disable things. Oh, we're just getting rid of the Linux port. Why? Felt like it. Fuck off. Um, we don't. We didn't. We didn't yeah. feel like supporting it. Yeah, but I. I and to your point, it, we're, we really have to wait and see this time next mm-hmm. year because that's gonna the one once the the deck is out in the wild and people are using it or not using it or whatever whatever the end result of that experiment is that that's i think that's going to be the linchpin to see if these guys are going to be singing a different tune correct monster trucks yeah. man they're shifty track master <laughs> sunday 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 honestly uh to, to me this just looked like a very janky, very weird uh, racing game, and I'm like, okay, I'm down for jank. What are you talking uh, about, Pedro? Pedro, 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 <laughs> how dare you? Okay, you <laughs> monster. Hang on. It's, no, look, no, 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 no. Okay. I, I, I like look, me some jank. I do. I, I Maybe it's because... game footage. No, look at this. <laughs> to, and try, Optimus Prime? Try to tell me RTX is not on. All right? I mean... <laughs> But yeah, no, it is uh, it is still in early access, but uh, it's like, okay, uh, there, there's some racing. So uh, is that like online multi? No, it's um, local multiplayer only. Boo. Again, and, and here I was PS3. all happy that it was, oh, you know, it was like, on. okay, now that looks fun. Game. See, I want an online yeah. racing with party vans. Yeah. Somebody could get the yeah. 18 yeah. van. Van demo derbies. <laughs> yeah. We could make it asymmetrical. Yeah. Mr. T could be driving one of those motherfuckers. Just trying wrecking everybody. <laughs> <in> <laughs> but it could, whoever, yeah, whoever no, does it, that it, has it to sing the lyrics janky, But it looked like it could, could have been fun. But then there's this. Nope. No online multiplayer. So disappointing. It's Mr. Garrison's device. <laughs> uh, what do we want to point out about this? Uh, it's all-terrain, all-vehicles, physics-based sandbox and racing game. It is early access, but most importantly, you can download the demo. It's about 800 megajoules. Put it on your hard drive. Play around with it. And let's see, what do we need to run it? You just need Linux 64-bit, 8 gigs of RAM, 500 megs. All right, that's interesting, considering it's an 800 meg download. You might want to take a GTX 980. Um, mm. <laughs> I, I I took the Pepsi challenge with this. I tried the demo. Oof. Um, I, keep in mind it's early access, but you need to walk into this before you download it and play the demos. Like think of this more like a semi-functional prototype. You know, because yeah. some people have really I, I blame Google for putting like beta or something like that. People just expect a functioning <laughs> product. Like mm. no 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 no. Just dial that one back. But hey, Defin- it definitely looks like uh, like a programmer's first racer in unity or something like that for sure it, it it's a thing it, it still needs things Most like likely. um windowed screen resolution <laughs> another option outside of like full screen 30 40 by 2160 which unity loves and uh yeah so just, just go play around with it controller doesn't work though okay right on. yeah i know pedro didn't care and it's like pedro never occurred to him to play a racing game with a controller so i what it, no. I most of my life I played racing games with the keyboard, so why the hell would I change now? I, I hey man, spite. Yeah, <laughs> spite's a good motivator. I don't hate racing honest. games that much. <laughs> spite for others. Yeah, I, I wasn't say I wasn't specific about spite at racing games. Just spite in general. Just spread that spite around. Maybe sprinkle the spray. Yeah. Spite. <laughs> Have a nice cold bottle of refreshing spite. Coming up next, we uh, discuss the pros of beating up children in the playground and also DDoSing open source games. Unfortunately, I'm nowhere near as sexy as one Sandy Martin. Uh, you don't wear so- as many shirts either. Sandy is so sexy he has to wear two shirt minimum. Yes. <laughs> He's definitely got the, the whole... 
Canadian thing going, which again, not Canadian either. So I even have that going against me. But chances are, you probably know that this is going to be the new segment. Possibly. And as is tradition, we do need to put the brakes on before we get to the news proper and uh, thank you, every single one of you me? who has helped us oh. get to this point. Well, I well, guess yeah. you technically as well, Jordan. Yes. I, I, I suppose I suppose we do have to thank our legions My of adoring fans. love each other so yeah. much. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> if, if you didn't like this for some reason, you wouldn't be supporting it. Well, we got to thank all of y'all for heading on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast, giving us your support. Because we, we really do appreciate it. We don't read ads. We don't do any of that shit. And we try to give you the best value I for don't your have buck. I shit on this desk to read an ad for either. <laughs> yeah. You, m- 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 maybe like glowy, glowy boards that uh, house fuck buddies. I don't know. But you can get, like I said, head on over to patreon.com slash Gamecast. Give us some money. Get some cool stuff in return, like access to our Discord channel, which you can get by subbing to us on Twitch as well. Uh, you can get access to a live video feed of the pre-pre-Super Shows and that extra hour of miscellaneous content that we produce every week by just clicking record while we're warming up. That's good stuff. Is that what we do Sometimes. to warm up? We get stretched out. Yeah, we, 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 do, we do some deep stretches, some breathing exercises. It's very erotic. We were thinking of opening up an ASMR channel. Uh, but yeah, you can get access to our show notes at the Death Note level or above. Uh, you can add comments. You can add clarifications, issue um, corrections, make suggestions. It's all pretty neat. We got a store as well, store.linuxgamecast.com for you to cover your shame with your other shame, your love of Linux Gamecast, or maybe you consume the shame liquid. Shirts. Yeah, or consume the shame liquid out of your Hell Elks mug. The shame liquid. Or the shame, you know what it is. <laughs> you you think that is refreshing seltzer, but nay. No, it's shame. It's, it's shame liquid. It is, shame it is liquid. liquefied shame. Yeah, we, 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 got, we got stickers, shame. we got masks, we got hoodies, all sorts of good stuff. Go buy them, put them on your body. Feel the shame. And we got wish lit lists. Uh, if you go to linuxgamecast.com, we got a support tab that you can put your mouse over. There's also some Bitcoin stuff if you want to give us some cryptocurrency to just completely murder fuck the environment. But you can also head on to our wish zones. Uh, Ven has a full, fairly comprehensive list on his of everything that's being used in the studio. And also, if you buy him some stuff, um, yeah, on that, that 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 way over there, you get your shiny name on the, the I fuck will, wall. I There's one you in each and every video. Yes, there's only one space left at the bottom. Are you going to be it's the one who liquid, claims though. it? Okay, no, we, we got to be very real about this. This one, because A, it's going to have to be short. B, you're going to have to hate some cash because there's nothing cheap left on that. But I do want to thank Game of Thrones. I got you on there on the list because Pedro, we, we both got the same thing. We got, we got Mr. Hands in stereo. Pedro can wave that around real quick. We gave that a nice little plug last week. And, there, there we it go. Is. Uh, it's the uh, the skull clamp, and it's got the note right here. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Like My note toy. says, um, <laughs> I asked Ven to be careful about not letting the neural interface take over Frank, so uh, keep it away from exposed skeletons, I guess, from Game Motron. See, see, this is really screwed up, man. You gave me this neural interface, <laughs> and it's got these probes I'm just using to cook freaking hot dogs, man. So... I, I, these just look Who like... Who are you feeding hot dogs to? Me, to? But yeah, there's that. There's anything about eating them. <laughs> I don't know. You're just, you're just cooking them for the sake of having I cooked just, sausage rooms. I, I, I want to watch the dogs burn, baby. Some, you know, some men, they just <laughs> want to watch your hot dogs burn. So uh, another thing we got up, if uh, this is going to be coming out later this week for everyone else, but if you want to look at it real quick, because I know we do have some people that come in and like, quit talking about the gaming stuff, go back and start doing the audio stuff, which I do when time allows. Got a new piece of hardware in using it right now the apex 301 compiler that video is baked it's ready to go if you're currently in discord head over to the announcement segment or just head over to patreon and you'll be able to get an snack peek at a device that was and is still currently doing auto gain control using 1980s technology so some people get a kick out of that well you know speaking of technology in 20 years we right, do need to think basil. basil oh yes we do we do have to think basil, basil. Oh, yeah. down there 21 Thanks. months that's yep. many years. That's, that, that, that's a lot years. of months. Thank you very much, Basil. Is that yeah. <laughs> that's a lot yeah, of months. One. I don't know. <laughs> the three? <laughs> three, yeah. Three. There's like two plus one. I, it's Roman. It's, it's tri- triangles. It's Roman. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. <right. laughs> but uh, yeah, but spe- speaking of uh, 20 year old hardware, imagine a future 20 years from now where we're not still trapped indoors. Um, although we might be. And the only way you can experience the outside world is through virtual reality. Uh, so this comes from John Carmack's Twitter. And he's saying, yo, something I've been pushing on for years is finally going to come to pass soon. We're going to make the uh, available an unlocked OS build for the Oculus Go headset that can be sideloaded to get full root access. And there's a really Roodle nice access. quote here. Ruval access. Root access. <laughs> uh, there, there is a there is a wonderful quote in here that I want to bring up. He says uh, that a randomly discovered shrink wrap headset 20 years from now will be able to update to the final software version after OTA has been disabled. And that's a super real concern for a lot of bespoke hardware. Um, yeah. There's a lot of shit that like will just never be updated. So good on Carmack for pushing for this. Good on Car- Carmack for getting it done. Because, yeah, it would be a real dick move if like, oh, you know, all, all that Oculus software, get, get fucked. Why don't you it's shut up and buy see. a new one? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good to see that uh, even if he is working for Facebook. Okay, we need to. Uh, he's still Carmack. <laughs> exactly. He is for the fuck mothering Carmack. He doesn't really work. Yeah. You, you can pay him some money and he'll come hang out. Possibly I think he's on the board. Place. He's not yeah. doing any development. He's just, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm he's on doing board. hardware design and development. 100%. Follow his Twitter. Mm. Yeah, he, he's always on about. Yeah, yeah no, 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 no. That, no. That's he, kind he, of he his said, 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 I think he that's said specifically he about Oculus, though. <laughs> no, he's, no he, said, he says right there in the thread, do you still work on Oculus? I'm a part-time consultant. So yeah, part-time not. consultant, part-time consultant. <laughs> See, is that our board member? <laughs> One or the other. We don't make these rules. I mean, yep. So I think this is very interesting, mainly because you, we, we know what's going to happen on it, right? A hundred percent coming up. Porn? It's already got porn. What are you talking about? That's already, More yeah, porn? It's, it's oh, already happened. No, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> this this fuck mothering hipster back here. We're going to have open source porn. Um, but... <laughs> Here's the thing. Yeah, man. open source, all right. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Carmack had to fight for that. Carmack had a uh, very good talk about the only way you know you would see something like AAA game engines getting open uh, was having people like Carmack at it. He's like, no, fuck all y'all. A, I made some really cool shit that I want to show off. B, I want people to have access to that. You know, we got things, you know, just starting with doom and it ran all the way to quake until I think the rage. So ID tech, whatever that was at that time, five, um, four, ish, maybe I don't know. five for the first five. rage was five. Okay. <laughs> so he's got a long history of that. And it's it, immediately, I read that and I'm like, mm, I might pick one up just because see what the community comes up to do with one of these. Right. Yeah. And I mean, like o- open VR exists or open, open XR exists. So mm. like there's, there's potential for it to actually work on Linux, whether Oculus likes it or not. So. Mm-hmm. And it's a VR headset that used to be tied to your Facebook account because yes, you couldn't use your thing unless you signed in with your Facebook account, yeah. but now it isn't. Well, won't be once this well, gets it released. Isn't. Now, granted, it costs like $400 more than the $200 one. Yes. Still. <laughs> Again, we're thinking 30 years <laughs> down the line. Now, you might remember, uh, I think it might have been earlier this year, late last year, uh, the fine carbon-based entities over at DDR Race Network contacted Pedro, and uh, no matter, like, we we lost their contact information, because I, I genuinely went on a hard search to try to track down who to get a hold to, to talk about maybe coming on the show. No, the, they sent us keys over Curator Connect, and they never sent us an email. Or an address that we could reach them in. (laughs) Yeah. Well then. (laughs) So to finish that, it was very difficult to get a hold to them was the end of it. But it's the the brick through the window method of getting in contact. (laughs) Maybe, maybe (laughs) the creator was just a little busy. A little bit. Yeah. And uh, he shared uh, an article on the 27th to say that, you know, we're an open source game and, um, you can tell exactly when, um, you know, things start happening when it jumps because that's when their page went live on Steam. Is that when the graph and, went burr? Yeah, oh. it's when the graph went burr. <laughs> uh, they currently have about uh, 1,300 uh, players on average concurrently playing. And with that increase in players, they started to see an increase in attempts to 
DDoS the server effectively. Um, and they there's a little description to see what they've tried. They've gone through Wireshark and try to see, okay, where is it coming from? What can we do? What can we... Effectively, how can we protect ourselves and keep the game running at the same time? So that's with a small-ish 1,300 concurrent player base. Now imagine games much bigger than DD Race Network, like your PUBGs, your Dotas, your Fortnites, your League of Legends back in its heyday. Imagine having millions of concurrent players on at once how much they get hammered on because there's a lot of sore losers on the internet. A lot. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. You would need somebody that specializes <laughs> and really touts their ability to serve large amounts of data to enterprise corporations like Amazon. Wait, oh, oh, why that? Are you <laughs> Well, and, 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 and I mean, like they, they, they go into this in the article and yes, if you're if you're Riot or if you're uh, Epic, you can afford to pay for DDoS mitigation solutions and mm-hmm. dedicated load balancers and dedicated hardware, uh, which, you know, a small open source game running on donations and s- small Steam proceeds. Yeah, it's not no, gonna be able thousands to do- of euros a month. No. Mm-mm. Yeah. <laughs> and and, you know, what? I, I got to give props to, for the uh, DDoS network um, people for actually blogging about this because they go into a lot of technical detail here. And we don't see a lot of small projects talk about this. Um, they are talking about some of the mitigation techniques they use, like having backup SQLite databases on game servers so that if they lose contact with the main uh, server, they can still function. Um, in, uh, trying to use various firewall rules to uh, better identify and whitelist traffic, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I don't, I don't know, maybe, hopefully this starts some conversation of in other open source communities and maybe pulling together some efforts to make some cor- some sort of like open source game security model. I don't know. Mm. Um, this is definitely though a tick in the steam networking pros column because, you know, having all your yes. shit obscured by valves VPN does narrow down your susceptibility to these kinds of attacks. But you know, if you're an open source game, first and That's, foremost, it's not really a super universal solution. Yeah, but if you are, uh, if you have any kind of money going through the Steam store, that's what that 30% gets you. Use that VPN, abuse as much of Valve stuff as you can. To Shut up, Steam. It. Give me more money. <laughs> and that too. Don't take I, I, anything I, I, away. I got... Just give me more money. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how well that works if you have like mixed Steam and non Steam players, because I, I know there's know. the open source Steam Sockets library that's supposed to provide yes. some layer of like compatibility. You, but you uh, can have it if your game has a Steam version, and you can have people from outside of Steam join the others on Steam. That that's why those yeah. sockets the, the uh, sockets uh, uh, again that's that's also source. that's also putting all your eggs in the valve basket which again if you're a developer i understand yes. why you may not necessarily <laughs> want to do that it's it's a complicated problem and i'm glad to see some people are talking about it and i hope more people will go in depth about it and I, I really hope anybody that's space. like going after and just an open open source game you know as somebody runs a hobby project that has gotten out of hand kind of like this go play in traffic seriously yeah right go fuck yourself yeah, yeah. no <laughs> Alpha 6 update, man. So, you know, Darkwing Duck in space, but with, like, less flight control. <laughs> Something like that. Living dangerously. So, Fly Dangerous, uh, we talked about it a while ago. It is a, from the ground up, re-implementation of some of the flight mechanics of Elite Dangerous because people race spaceships in Elite Dangerous. And, you know, aside from going through the uh, Herculean task of getting it running under Linux, you may not want to, you know, sit through the grind and try to get a cool ship to actually get to the racing part. So uh, this is Alpha 6. They have updated all the things. There's a lot of bug fixes. The guy says he got encouraged to um, push this update out because he was embarrassed about other people using his software uh, and how broken it was. (laughs) So that's fun. Um, So there's, uh, amongst other things, there's a new ship, the Ray, and they actually have time trials working. So there's stuff like, you know, tracks and splits and recording of your time so that you know how well you did. So progress is being made on this. Uh, you can download it and check it out. It does run. Um, that's about all I can say about it. I don't know. I, I think she's doing a good job. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I I tried this last time. I did. And uh, I, I think we had like a communal experience of A, a, B, and C, just not knowing what the hell we're doing, and um, everything else is just bouncing off the terrain, going, how do I fly this damn thing? How do I not <laughs> crash? Blam! <laughs> it's still a very fascinating project, and I'm very glad to see that it is being developed. So, best of luck with that. Uh, links in the show notes. 
find everything mm. and uh, go check it out. Flight Stick supports a big one, you know, especially yep. like multiplayer yeah, and everything else. The big one well, here is that uh, this one actually has a native Linux version, while the um, the actual game you can't even you know create an account over Proton. Oh. You can create an account. Good luck fucking logging in. That was that was my experience. Did you ever get that resolved? <laughs> no, fuck no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Neither did I. I. I just straight up said, you know what? Delete my account. I'm just going to refund well, the game. What, one one week <laughs> later, when they got back to me, I'm just like, I've lost my ability to care about this. Mm. I, 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 ha- I had a week of like, I'm going to stream this game because I actually want to play it. And then... <laughs> No. no. So maybe, maybe maybe I can get some fly around jollies in uh, Fly Dangerous. So, maybe, maybe you can yeah. react to that on on Twitch if I stream Good it. News, everyone. Uh, Twitch has done a thing, and it's really Some tune things. Really a good thing. What what's going on is finally, I think we should turn that in preface uh, that email and phone verification for accounts. Yay! Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, all right, credit what credits do. This is uh you you know we I should say we have options um uh, to set, you know, people are gonna be able to chat in our chat. You can set it. They have to have verified email or they have to have a verified mobile and there's time constraints on that. How long how old the account is or how long they've been following you. It's all there. You can find it in just your safety rating setup and you know, this is all done to curb the like people doing ban evasion and all the other fun stuff. Well, I should say horribly unfun stuff and um, good. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. You, you know, <laughs> hey, hey, it's a thing that should have been implemented years ago when people started widespread harassment campaigns on Twitch. Yeah. With the brand. And if so. you're a prominent enough streamer, have a look at this because this is exactly the kind of thing that will, well, it won't fix it, but it will at least ameliorate the situation to a point to... Yeah, go ahead. I, I I wonder I wonder how much of like account creation batching is going to happen. So like we have oh yeah well we have a bunch of these accounts that are like a month old now that we can start using because we there's that the, I mean, the very basic yeah. basic basic thing of at least requiring an email. But you know mm-hmm. hey is anybody you know how easy it is to spool up email addresses? That's not a thing. Now what we currently have our set to because I immediately just jumped in and uh, you have to have a verified email. Period. That's never going to change. And uh, currently, just to test it out, uh, you have to have email plus verified mobile if the account is less than one week old to come into chat. Which I seems think, reasonable. Yeah, there's some general settings if you've been thinking about, okay, just some basic security. Now, there's another thing that happened at Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> that got announced yesterday. But they didn't announce it, announce it directly, but somebody else like showed it off on Twitter. To be like, Ooh, <laughs> we better get something out there real quick. It's all about the boost. You got to do the boost. Paid oh, boost? boost? It's, oh, DJ. DJ Wheat, why? Oh, baby. You got some. Uh, we might even have audio for the next thing. Let me see. Why wouldn't this just stay free forever? Yeah, definitely. Um, so what we're doing with Boost is giving viewers the ability to buy super high visibility promotions for their favorite creators. And these types of placements come with a cost. We think this is a great he, way to He really support. is rocking the sexy Further, Colonel Sanders heard directly look. from creators that it's hard to get their names out there. It's hard to try and utilize different forms of social media to grow All right. Their- so there we go. That's enough of that. Let me, let me tell you what's going to go down. <laughs> You're going to get a uh, creators. Uh, they're doing a test case. I think it's like 100 people right now. But this is what they did last year uh, around December to where you can boost a streamer's visibility. Now, last year they did it with channel points. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Something to use channel points for. No, it never rolled out like widely and publicly. But they've taken that idea and said, you know, instead of using these pesky channel points that you can accumulate for watching a viewer, you know, watching a streamer, let's convert the channel points in into money. Now, once we've done that, um, you're going to be able to pay Twitch some money, and I'm. They, they need to update like how this is going to work because I think Twitch just gets that money and they're going to give that stream boost points, which will do something. It'll affect their waiting yeah. on the front page algorithm or some shit. Yeah. Uh, uh, one would hope, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, Put we're just, just going to take your money. You looking for a Linux. Get boosted. It's like, oh, <laughs> it, okay. it's boosted up. You know, the, if it does boost visibility, I don't know where I'm at with this, especially um, because that, that, 
just opens the immediate door to, you know, larger streamers and using an alt account to, uh, like just creating their boost stream, you know, cause if I'm on the front page of Twitter, I'm gonna make sure damn well I stay there. I'm going to be boosting my own stuff to make sure I'm on top of that food chain. So I need to ask in a system like this, this is why I really wish this had came with like a legitimate updated fact. There's a fact from last year, but I'm not going to use that. What there has to be like tiered, like what's the viewer cutoff, you know, like if you have 10,000 viewers, you're probably good. Probably or, good. or like what, or even like can multiple people boost the channel? Like, how does that, how does that work? If you have, if you have a larger channel and you're able to brigade a bunch of people to um, yeah. p- commit, like, I don't know if it costs a dollar, even that, that p- people are willing to pay that much to have their name spoken on stream, on, right? on like, the screenshot. It had something like pay a dollar for 1000 boost. And like three thousand boost was like three dollars yeah. or two ninety eight or something like that. I, I I don't know. This is it's it's a little scummy because they're trying to double dip by having you know the, you you got to pay to find the stuff that we're using to sell ads to you. I mean, I guess they yes, just and keep TV already model, popular but. channels continue making them even more popular so that, that even more people get to that's yeah. why i wish we had that fact to cut down on the speculation because naturally you do have to speculate. Is there going to be a cutoff or is this going to be don't worry. Six years from now, we'll add the email verification. Um, but do, does and does like the size of the channel like at all affect the weightings? Like, should smaller channels be heavier, more more heavily weighted than say larger channels because mm-hmm. they need more discoverability? Like, there, there's all these questions that you're right. And probably that, Twitch should have put something together to explain this. I, I don't think they planned on that screenshot coming out. So this was you know typical reaction. Let's not have anything set up ahead of time just in case. But but, 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 um, how many boosts, uh, would be required to like, uh, like get rid of the hotspots? Okay. Can we have like, uh, that <laughs> goal? Pa- pa- so- sorry, sorry, partners only. Oh, fine. Boo. <laughs> Pedro, do, do you have any of your traditional Mateus takes? But takes us, uh, we don't actually know anything about it. No, that's what we're speculating on the internet. Yep. What, nothing bad. Yep. <laughs> Get the, get that tinfoil, buddy. Thing. Wrap it around your head. This 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 could be good for a channel like ours. We're not you know big by any means or measure. Uh, so yeah, if people could help us in that would require people <laughs> like retweeting and sharing our stuff, and they are violently against that. Fair <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> At least when it comes to me, I know I'm not a very interesting person. Except so for you, I don't Sandy, take it personally. You gave me a retweet from our main account. Thank you, sir. Oh man, Sandy has an alert on all of us, and every time you retweet or post anything, like like. Oh yeah, no, we always get a like from Sandy. That that's again, Sandy what, 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 is an what, awesome when human we, being. When we don't, something is wrong. I and I get what what I'm saying is like right now, forever and whatever. Your favorite streamer, fuck us. We don't give a shit. Uh, really, we kind of do, but people you like, that's what you do, man. Like let other people know about that project and that's always going to have a bigger impact because i was listening to or watching a couple of larger streamers or mid-tier streamers i guess you would say talk about what the funnel down you know was from them being promoted on the front page Mm -hmm. how much of that converted to like new subs like it's low single digits from being on the front page so what's going to be the roi return on investment of this in the long run and all we can do is sit back and expect it Ex- ex- speculate. Yes. You are yeah. deal with it. Ex- speculate. The, 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 the viewer margins <laughs> on speculate. Twitch are pretty rough though. Cause like <laughs> e- even, even like big name streamers, like you go in in the middle of the day and like maybe only a couple thousand people are actually watching at a given time mm-hmm. out of, out of the entire viewer base. So I don't know. That's, that's we uh, want uh, as with anything Twitch does. That's I'm, I'm let, let's see how this actually we're is. Gonna wait, and see. wait and see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it could be a fantastic thing. It could not be. But that is that. Now, everyone knows uh, when Linus is not busy developing the kernel that our opera, he, he runs <laughs> a small YouTube channel called Linus Tech Tips. And <laughs> not that Linus, the other Linus, you know, the one I'm talking about. <laughs> I think uh, in the top 14 largest YouTube channels, period, large audience. And um, it's like, okay, all right. They were doing the WEN show last night, which is their weekly, kind of like what we do, but, you know, a lot more general, you know, topic wise. So your dog's screeching. Like a little yeah, puppy scratch. Yeah, 
Oh, he's having a good time. Scratch that couch. Let out, let out, you dumb idiot. They got a thing going on to where th- there's a bet going on on Lin- Linus Media Group is they're both, and I, I mean both these two lads, uh, these fine young gentlemen. They're Linus not the same person? Luke, no, 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 no. No. Starting <laughs> after this show, starting this upcoming week, they're both going to be using Linux full time, day in and day out for their gaming and everything else. Which, oh, hell, you got my attention now. I, I want to see this. Uh, we got to have a listen to this, though. So, uh, Linus Media Group, <laughs> don't copyright don't strike me, bro. All right? Or Please, says, no or suit. Whoever, whoever's in charge of that, because <laughs> I'll fight you. Um, no suit, no suit. Yeah, it'd be great for ratings. Let's, have, let's see if we can have a listen. The challenge is real. The challenge Pretty is happening. Drive. Luke and I are going to be switching to Linux on our daily driver machines. This may, in fact, be the last WAN show that I broadcast on a Windows machine for quite some time. And we haven't figured out exactly what the punishment for... All right. Nipple torture. Always nipple torture with you, man. (laughs) It's like, hey, man, can I get a Diet Coke nipple torture? I want a Diet Coke and nipple torture, man. That's why I got this, and I don't have the the, the clamps on my nipple right now. I don't want this to was kind of interesting because uh, a I I really want to see I what I'm saying is everyone needs to watch the wine show next week because I want to see that broadcast live from his house running Linux, and nothing else. Because I'll tell you right now, I haven't gotten a phone call about that. I'm like, yo, what's the right way to do this? And when it comes to public facing figures, probably the guy you want to get in touch with, but don't, don't, don't. What I do want to say is this. Um, I'm, I, I want this to go well. And we had a long discussion about this in the pre, pre super shows and about, you know, what distribution you would land on and what they're going to end up doing. And this is going to be good because they're, they're both, neither of them have current, I guess we can say up to date information on Linux. And uh, I'm going to say that because we need to play clip number two. Go ahead and uh, cue that up, other Vin. Thank you. All right. About what distributions that they're going to uh, pick from. Other major ones that I've missed. No, we're not running Fedora. Like, come on, guys, put put real... Real serious you get, you suggestions. Get, like, My extra heart points or something. If you run, <laughs> he stops himself just short of saying that Fedora is not a real distro. Now, now or is not a serious suggestion <laughs> for everyone who's not up to speed on this. They decided what distributions they should run by opening a straw poll, and they were taking suggestions just then for like what should be on that straw poll. And somebody dared that elite hackery. Uh, Server only distribution. <laughs> yes. Fedora. Did did that oh, make you happy when you when you heard that? Oh, it broke it broke my it broke my little Linux using heart. Uh-huh. Um I mean <laughs> let's 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 be real. Linus can't use Fedora because that's too smooth an experience. Y'all need a real fucky desktop like uh like Suze. But yeah, um to 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 defense point. Um defense point. Uh they did put a straw poll. The results were they're gonna be using pop and mint. And you know, pop is pretty polished. I don't, I don't know. Top, the, let's go down like Ubuntu. The store. Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Pop, yes, Ubuntu, Arch, Mint, Manjaro, <laughs> Debian, Elementary, Draugr, and Gentoo. Out of that, again, Draugr and Gentoo. Out of that, no Fedora because get yeah, too elite. Not, not a real too too hot. Not not, not a real operating Spicy system. Distance. So Arch is I mean, a so, serious suggestion. Gentoo is a serious suggestion. Draugr OS, um, which is now called uh, Chimeros, um, no, is no, a real suggestion. No, that was that was Gemerus. Dragoros was another. It was it was a similar product or a similar project, I think. I'm confusing the gaming distros. Then they all have yeah. silly names. To be you're, fair. you're genuinely so far out in like the edge case distro land of like yeah. we don't even we're not understand. No, 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 no Hannah Montana. So yeah, um, like like I said, it looks like they're gonna they're gonna be using Pop and Mint. Pop is pretty polished. Mm-hmm. Like they have an entire customer success team going. Several of the engineers are like in chat realm now. Uh, so, you know, there's going to be, there, you're going to have a little support. Is definitely the suggestion. Yes. I think <laughs> mint, mint. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. Here's a hundred percent. I'm legitimately curious because this is not something we typically see is, uh, you know, both Linus and Luke, they, they know what the hell a Linux is. And Luke said he'd run Linux a while back. So he's not going to be completely out, but you're, uh, informed 
your better than average Windows desktop expert, how the Linux desktop experience coming back to it in say five years, but it's also going to be analogous to a new user, what they're going to be hit with. Is it, is it going to be smooth? Are they going to get their drivers installed correctly? Are they going to know, you know, let's update everything through a repo. If, if it, and I do think pop OS is the right take for at least one of them because, and I don't care which one I, cause I firmly believe out of the box, brand new experiment pop OS is the new mint when it comes to uh, my, like the, start with us. That's, one. that's, that's definitely how they're trying to position themselves. Yeah. I don't know. I, I predict this is just going to be boring as fuck, save for a couple moments of <laughs> deliberate obtuseness where they're like, yeah, I tried doing this this way because that's how it works on Windows. And I haven't bothered to Google how to do a thing on Linux. Um, I don't I don't know, though. Uh, are, are we gonna, are we taking bets on like what the winner and what the split is going to be? Because I think the like the second the loser is declared, the winner is just going to jump back into Sriracha's arms. I know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh, you you gave up first. Okay, then you lose. I'm going to go back to Windows now, too. So now uh, it's something that we're definitely going to be curious about, uh, at least myself, because you'll notice that for our live stream, all of us are on Linux. Everything in this studio is running Linux. There's five Debian boxes powering our live stream. And we have live, live closed captioning because audio doesn't work under Linux. All, all of our viewers have to listen to this. Yeah. You're just imagining we're using telekinesis to broadcast. That's the only thing you're really hearing. You can take the headphones. Oh, I thought really? it was um, uh, text to speech. It, it, I'm it, using it, Morse code. just like three different no. pitch ones. <laughs> we, we're communicating. I've been blinking in Morse code this whole time. No one's noticed. But nothing but the raw power <laughs> of our brain worms coming to you live. So... I, I, I want to see uh, the first person to have a problem with sound. That is I, like, I, I want to see. I want to see who gets stopped by trying to install NVIDIA drivers because I think that's the litmus test. You, see, you that, can't get that, past that, that. That's where I think the pop skips. But okay, this is this is pop good. skipping a jump. A pop skipping a hmm hmm. Oh, the, <laughs> pop the, skipping mm, an ISO there, there's, that's something all you there. there's something there. There's something there. Who's gonna be the first? Who's gonna have the best? experience because it would drive me crazy you know we're all here everyone in the audience and you know the other 99 percent of you that are listening to the audio podcast but you know going to linux we all ended up on linux for different reasons but i'm going to say a lot of us the vast majority of us because we're curious we, we want to expand our knowledge base like we would drive us crazy to have a freely available operating system and not go fuck with it so it's just like that's not gonna sit well i'm like uh the, yeah the what's window thing's fun but look at all this cool shit i can do over here i gotta learn how this works and I'm literally on Linux because Captain Cisco told me to. Exactly. It, there's a subset of people. I found the Ubuntu CD. <laughs> who, uh, they're settlers. Windows is good enough. That's all I need to know. Now, I do think at the core of a lot of the outside of just built-in humanity being tribal, there is there is a little bit of that side-eye because, you know, anybody who's running Linux, we can work our way backwards to Windows or Mac OS like we we can figure that shit out i mean it's not that difficult that skill set doesn't work the other way around though because this is gonna yeah. be the biggest thing that curb checks people walking into linux for the first time is coming in with that ego you gotta humble yourself because your extensive windows desktop knowledge the ways things are done it's not gonna happen you're not gonna be able to click your way I, through it you're not gonna be able to just like use your you think you would it's not, it just doesn't work like that i've seen it over 30 years it didn't work like that then now we're trying to get to a, this moon future where things are going to get smoothed out in this perfect world that jordan thinks uh That's, that is achievable uh, i i, I, I mean yeah go, doubts, go go but, put words in my mouth but <laughs> well i was trying to quote what you said last time so <laughs> i'm yeah i'm, I'm it, it, it is absolutely achievable i don't know i i think i think more they're doomed to fail if they're going to approach this as a novelty if this is just going to be a fun haha thing then they're not going to succeed because they're not going to approach it with the perspective of hey we this is a thing that i need to use no this is a thing that i need to use longer than the other guys so i can go back to windows that that is setting yourself up perfectly. well i think the big thing about this is to try to get some of that because they're you know hey you got to pay the bills outlinus media group and they, they got to think about that of like okay this is a potential revenue stream with the steam deck and covering that and having videos based around that so let, let's get started with that let's just get those ideas planted now one thing i do want to see one thing i've not seen now i don't keep track of uh, linus media group enough but i do typically catch the wan show because it's on when i get done with my stream on fridays Outside of the one video that I saw that was done featuring Lutris, 
you guys don't do a good job covering, you know, fuck us as a podcast. I don't care about that. But like other shows, websites, information like ProtonDB and stuff like that, getting that information out there to your audience. I think that is going to be very helpful while you're getting up to speed. You know, it, it wouldn't kill you. So like, cause that was something they brought up on the wine show. I was like, where's the information at? It's all over the place. I can't find it. And it's not that hard to track down, especially when it comes to gaming, like proton DB, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The proton DB is the place that everyone should go, especially when you have mainstream gaming websites telling you, yeah, proton DB, it's where you go to find a thing. <sighs> the, the, it's Acrista, not- the, the Acrista rats. <laughs> the thing that annoys me the most is, uh, especially when you see non lytics focused uh, websites, YouTube channels, trying to talk about Linuxy stuff, and you see what we saw earlier with that article about the Steam Deck saying that when it's docked, it can do 4K at 120 hertz. It's like, uh, yeah, on a still image. Good luck with that, because that dock isn't doing anything, and Valve has said time and time again. Adding a dock isn't going to do a damn thing. What it has the same power profile. But it's technically it's correct. In. Yeah, technically correct. <laughs> Which we have established is the best kind of correct. Yes. Yeah. It's technically correct, but they keep repeating the exact same thing, which is technically correct, but disingenuous at best. We, what I'm saying is everyone, everyone just needs to chill the fuck out and like, it, this is always good, you know? Yes. Yes. Uh, is it a painful watch? Is, is it like twisting knives with some of the stuff that other presenters and YouTubers and Twitch streamers that they're going to fucking get wrong? Yeah, it is. But you know what? Be on their side, not against them. That's all I'm saying, man. Let's just like keep that train rolling in the right positive direction. Because I will say what I've watched from the lightest media group, they're at least fucking trying, man. They're not like... I, I, I just, I just have one no person on there that does Linux on a regular basis. The my, my, the... The, the the worst case scenario is someone runs into an issue that becomes a talking point for the next five years because mm-hmm. someone couldn't figure out how to change the permissions on it. Right. Or something I, like listen, that. I don't want uh, yeah. my, my side hobby of dropping low yield thermonukes into Twitter conversations about AV production under Linux. Don't, don't, no, no, let's keep that one going. I, I, I derive too much joy from breaking that up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, coming up next, Ollie, Ollie oxen free. We're throwing chairs at Skatebird. Ah, I'm an albatross. An albatross, not a Skatebird. Shut up, Cruz, in conformity. No, ever, never, never. We're throwing chairs at Skatebird this week, done by uh, Glass Bottom Games on the Unity engine. You can tell by that gray screen of loading at the beginning <laughs> when you uh, start it up. What? You can pick it up for about 20 bucks US. What is it? Grind on bendy straws, kick flip over staplers, and carve killer lines through cardboard and sticky tape parks. Above all else, Skatebirds try their best. We got to thank Stride PR for sending us some keys for the Skatebirding. So, uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Let's get this started. Pedro. What do you think about the skate burbs? Uh, skate burb over here on the GTX uh, 1080 and the Ryzen 7 3700X launched out of the box. It doesn't hold 144 at 2560 by 1440. It tries, but the longer you are in a level, the lower the furbs seem to get. So, yeah, I don't actually even uh, put in his uh, bit that uh, I probably wouldn't like the folder that it creates in the pictures folder. I do. Because it's actually respecting the XDG standards. It looks for which folder you have defined as your pictures folder, rather than creating a folder called pictures, because the developer just assumed that everyone has their system in English. So, very good job. That's a very good job. Uh, And that's exactly how you should do it. Uh, as for the controllers, both the DualShock and DualSense worked out of the box as well as all the X input controllers. Probably something to do with uh, Steam input being enabled by default by the devs out of the box. Uh, and this is a skate game, so I my muscle memory is on the keyboard, so I played it on the keyboard because, yeah... Uh, although I was physically smaller at the time, so my hands want to be further apart from the cursor keys and CVB in space, but apparently I've grown up a little bit. Not inside my head, just, you know, on the outside. Uh, as for the fun, well, since we're speaking of keyboards, what's wrong with your face? I mean, uh, the, uh, default button layout? Seriously. 
you put all the trick buttons into Q, E, and uh, R, and F, and Z, and X, it's like, what? what's wrong with you? Huh? And in order to move the camera, you needed to hold down the right click to use the mouse? It's like, what? Huh? Okay, no, something went very wrong when they were deciding on what the control um, standards should be. I don't know what motivated that, but I was having a hard time actually enjoying the game. Until I just rebound all the keys from memory to the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 defaults on the keyboard. The moment I did that, I could actually, you know, start to enjoy the game and the new mechanics and everything that it does. And I enjoy the lighthearted burbs who clearly don't take themselves very seriously. They just want their human buddy to have a good time and they're using their finger skateboards and tech decks, if you prefer, to help them do it. It is very much what I remember enjoying from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 and 3 to some degree, but with chirpy, scramming burbs. It gets dinged a chair for the frankly terrible control defaults, but it gets three chairs. <laughs> oh, baby, that's three chairs. Jay, yeah. baby, you want to take it up next? <laughs> yeah, why not? All so right. on Fedora 34, 64-bit with the R9-3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, it does in fact launch out of the box, and it almost almost holds 60 at UHD with the 1080 Ti. It tries so hard, gets so far, but in the end, doesn't do it. Um, yeah, I had to readjust the controls by default. They use the analog stick for um, skateboard tricks. I don't like that. I swapped it to the D-pad. Also, why is reset down on the D-pad? That makes no sense. I don't know. Um, I like the Bird, remix Bird documentary soundtrack and, you know, like your Tony Hawks of old. There's quite a number of tracks you can find and unlock just by playing through the game. Uh, yeah, fun wise. I don't know. What, whenever whenever I, we uh, we get keys for games, like we get weird names for download depots sometimes. A lot of the times they're like for beta testing or whatnot. And this one, it was angle bracket, dramatic voice, angle bracket, skateboard. I don't know. Worth mentioning. Uh, I spent a lot of time in childhood trips playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 on my Game Boy Advance. It was a cut-down port, but it did kindle my love for extreme sports games. It's fun to dick around on a field, the Spider-Man, busting out some sick kick flips without risk of mangling your meat shins or, you know, getting arrested. This game doesn't quite capture that. There are some issues when you get into corners. The actual skateboarding mechanics are just a little off. Uh, the one that really bugs me is the timing needed to, like, land manuals. I used to spam manuals like nobody's business in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 to link tricks. This one, you got to be a lot more precise, and it's real annoying. There's minor issues here and there a lot like that, which really, which really, uh, which really kind of kills my buzz. The worst of which is that fucking camera. It's, it's, it's so bad. The devs have said, and we covered it last week, they're going to fix it. Uh, I hope I hope that comes sooner than later. And I mean, like the rest of the game is pretty cute. You build your burb. You have fun skating around some dude's bedroom. Do some challenges. Uh, unlock some other levels. It's a Tony Hawk game with uh, some of the not so much the technical acumen there. Um, I got and I gotta say, like you're comparing first levels. I know we're we're gonna beat Tony Hawk Pro Skater Two with a fucking bat like it's a dead horse, like it's the goddamn Steam segment. But Hangar was such a good level, and that bedroom just leaves so much to be desired. Ugh, it's all right. It's okay. Um, it's not the best skateboarding game I've played, but it's probably the only one you can play natively on Linux. So that's worth something. I'm gonna give it two cheers. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, here's an update for you, Jordan. That this is the fixed camera. <laughs> so wrap your minds around that ladies and gentlemen oh, what do i gotta say about it on a technical level i do not have a problem with skate burp no real complaints when did it work full screen that worked x clone sx tricky no problems there wireless picked up without any fuss now pedro you didn't have a problem with the pictures i understand that it does create nope. a pictures directory it didn't bother me at all because i went and looked at it and my pictures directory had a 200 megabyte video file on it so there is that. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Now let's talk about performance. What am I running it on? I'm running on this little itty bitty baby Thread Ripper 1920X, 32 gigs of RAM, NVMe with an NVIDIA 2060. That's right. 1080p, it does 60. I'm fantastic. But at UHD 4K for people that are bad at maths, 2160p, get about 30, 35. So keep that in mind. That's both on 11 maximum graphics. So one thing with the graphics I did notice, I showed that off in my live stream last night. It's V-Synced at 
60. Uh, if you go one step above the fugly setting, anything below that, you get about 200. <laughs> Just a curiosity. Now, let's talk about the fun. Outside of these two, like these two Yahoos, these beautiful, beautiful co-hosts of mine, I've never played a skateboard game. I just skipped it, not from lack of desire, just didn't exist in front of me. So I wanted to let everyone know that. I have no preconceived notions about how these things should work. But fuck that camera right in its little birdie beak. I mean, thank Flying Spaghetti Monster that we were able to dodge the release bad camera that this initially uh-huh. shipped with. Yeah, keep that in mind, man. I'm not kidding. My biggest takeaway from playing this game last night, and I got about two hours into it right now, it's... It's just that camera, that auto snap. Anytime you begin movement, just that that caused me to quit playing last night. I'm done fighting this camera for this evening. And here's here's what it does. You have this real smooth free look with your right D-pad. You know, typically, right? Like any third person over the shoulder type game, your camera control, which is great. You can look up, down, left, and right until you initiate movement. Then it speed snaps to behind the burb camera immediately you better hold on because it snaps and it snaps hard and there's nothing you can do about it and it does it every single time but outside of that you know what it's a fun little game because it is i mean you're on a mission you start off to clean a room and during this endeavor you learn some skateboard tricks i had a fun time with it i did i mean the controls and the mini games you know with the balancing and all that simple enough and you know for the most part yeah solid progression a little confusing to me it was thankfully I, I had Brother Mateus over there uh, to go, you're doing it wrong. Open the mini map. Jeez. <laughs> I, I upset him enough to, yes, the mini map to find your locations. You hit pause because that's how it works in this game, which is okay. But once I understood that, things were a bit more clear. I'm just going to say this. At the end of the day, when you mix in like the colorful environments, like the cutesy little characters and like fun little skateboards, I'm just fucking with you. Fix the temp camera, man. Um, uh, it, it still needs some work. But I'll say, too, sort of want nineteen ninety nine. Maybe you want to put that in your bird and smoke it. Maybe. No, I'd, I'd say really probably wait till it. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. There, there's there's a good game in here. Uh, it just needs. More I, I think it maybe needed a couple of more months in the oven. And I do think this is a like one person deal. Yeah. On the development. Uh, side. Wait, so, uh, there's at least three people. <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's one person with a mirror. <laughs> maybe maybe it's like one person and is uh, like perfectly good doppelganger and is perfectly evil doppelganger mm-hmm. and the evil guy the, worked on the camera. C- the uh, CEO of uh, Glass Bottom Games is called Megan Fox. No, not that one. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, all right. No, actually, I think they did a very good job. The camera originally was a heck of a lot more jittery and a heck of a lot worse than it is now. If you don't touch the camera controls, because I never touched the camera controls in the previous Kate games. Of course you didn't, uh, because you're a monster that plays on the keyboard. Yeah, because you oh, can oh, see oh, everything also they didn't you have camera controls. touching the camera. <laughs> yeah, t- t- Tony Hawk had a fixed camera angle for a couple games, so that really yeah. helped not having that problem. This one has a fixed camera if you move. Don't touch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, just pretend that you don't have a second analog stick. Just don't, just don't do it. Oh, that, that's kind of right, what I to. And I do want to point out that, yes, I am aware that the game has a, a drop camera, which is in the settings. I immediately tried that where you can just drop the camera and skate around. But all, all we need is the ability to disable that behind the shoulder snap when you touch it so I can look around while I'm skating because that's just too jarring for me. And that, that's a shame because I was having a fun time with it. But yeah. Also, also some better corner handling. If you're stuck in like a square corner, mm-hmm. it's real annoying to get out of there. Um, all right. Well, coming up next, we talk about Pedro's skin condition and what we can do to fix it mm-hmm. with high powered acid. It's the end. What are you doing here? <laughs> the YouTube stats clearly say you should not be watching this bit, but. For some reason, some of you still do. It's a timestamp. I guess you're not. I, I click on the timestamp. Yeah, I guess, watch it. I guess you don't really watch. It's just on in the background, and that's just the I, people I, yeah, that I, watch I, I got up and walked away. It's just background noise. I'm just saying, you're more <laughs> curious. Auto plays going, so I, I see that our average <laughs> yeah. watch time keeps going up and up and up. I'm like, I. It's better I don't not find out. I just want those numbers yeah. to be there. Uh, <laughs> don't want to know. <laughs> Ours seems to be like 30 seconds. <laughs> it seems to be the drop off. <laughs> Our average watch time is 24 fucking minutes, Pedro. 
No, like contiguous. The, yeah, that's the stat if, that it if you shows go into you. the breakdown. I'm just it, going by like goes, the breakdown. It, it shows you like right when you log in to the studio. Oh, uh, right, the top one. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I usually don't pay attention to that. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, if you'd like to let us know what else we didn't pay attention, or me specifically, you can absolutely do that. You can go to linksgamecast.com, you hit the contact button, there's a form you gotta fill. It It's fairly easy, fairly self-explanatory, there's some caveats at the top that you may want to read. But uh, nah, yeah, LGC Weekly hard. is the show for the hate mail. Okay, if you're back with us, Jordan, uh, feel free to take this one. I will! So this one... <laughs> comes from as I went the atomic ass ooh uh and he says I couldn't help but notice that Pedro has sounded a little more diseased than normal in the past two weeks and then to my horror I checked the video and discovered that not only his face but his internet were also star star much star star more diseased than usual is it safe to assume maintenance has been called already should we perhaps restrict his trips to the beach going forward nah he needs more sand more sand in all of his crevasses yeah, no. Uh, once again, I uh, I am forced to admit that uh, Sandy Martin's a sexy man, so sexy in fact that his camera was just like, nope, we're not handling any of that. So he got very, very pixely <laughs> for the second week. <laughs> we were utilizing. Listen, man, I, I was stuck in the middle of a Canadian sandwich, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> that has a lot of bacon in it too. A lot of bacon, ham everywhere. No, we do want to thank uh, Sandy for showing up. Not one week, but two weeks in a row. Can you imagine if you just started watching two weeks ago? I'm like, who the fuck is this person? I just yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> man. It, it, it'd be weird if you thought that like Pedro slot is rotating. <laughs> we, we just need to randomly. If you guys swap want to do that? Out. I'm not entirely opposed to it. <laughs> You're replaceable. Don't worry. Um, so yeah. He's, he's got to deal with it. It, it. It's Pedro. He keeps showing up. So, I mean. <laughs> I'm like a bad rash. <laughs> to be fair. Um, no, if. He's like herpes. If I was going to. If I was just going to abdicate my um, place altogether. Uh, Sandy would be my first choice. This is going to require a lot of shirts. a replacement. <laughs> Two- <laughs> No, what it, it's like fucking Power Girls boob window. Every episode, he just puts on more and more shirts until eventually he's like fucking Violet Beauregard, just completely purple because he's overheating. It, it's a traditional Canadian way to prep for the winter, man. By the time you'll be fine. No, that, that, that's just called eating poutine and taking a nap. I don't oh, know. What you're on that You've been reading some dangerous. bad books. So yeah, we live on your feedback. Scream in our direction. Drop us a comment on Patreon, on YouTube, or the best way is to use the system that we built to get a hold of us that empty built <laughs> yes <laughs> so yeah do that anything else you need to add jordan yes come on help me out okay <laughs> i got no, i got here i thought i wasn't the one uh paying attention <laughs> on that bombshell man <laughs> you can always find us each and every saturday night kicking off around 7 30 we're live for patrons and pre pre super shows. Check that out later. But we're back here on Twitch for everybody at 8.30. Doing the thing we do. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm just at Vin on mass.linuxteamcast.com. Or if you want to come over to the Twitters. Of course, old people hang out. At Vin Stone. I'm there. Or just send me an email. I'll get back to you. At Reply Me in Discord or IRC. And I'll be there to at least read it. I'm Jordan Swung. I am forever staring blankly into the distance. You can try and see what I'm looking at by going to twitter.com, going to at the burning fool, or following me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash burning fool. And I am Pedro Matos, extending a big, big thank you to uh, Mila Gamer Analytics. Uh, should a rate right at the end of the uh, the show. Thank you very much. I also uh, want to give a uh, shout out get, to Katana, get all that super Katana Katana Steel actually <laughs> using the Hell Ox things for their intended purpose. Oh my god! <laughs> so yeah, you can find me on Twitter at unaccounted four. That is uh, the best way to just poke at me, and chances are I will gladly um, have an argument with you about nothing at all if you so choose. Guaranteed. <laughs> yes. Or your money back. <laughs> we didn't learn anything, so here's some credits. Yeah. They're pretty accurate. I don't know. That's a that's a bold claim. No, I'm saying we're highly accurate. Okay. That's, that's 
very bold plan. Anyways, we got to thank the people who pay to show up in the credits every week. We love them. You love them too. Our advisors, Omegas and Artharon, and our executive producers, Aldi S. Barbramp, Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, The Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer 7, Holy Toast, and Kahaku Love Shock, baby. And our little Nicky fans, Darkwing and Abstraction. And to see monsters, Jack, Renault, Ryder X, Machina, Trudgy, Vertanuda, Justin, and Frostclaw, followed by the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, System T, Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresny, Kim, Smashly G, Chris, Stephen Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.1, Steve, the other Steve, uh, Dirty Dean, Back, the other Gable, other John, Steve. and Dodger. And we got the gang, the Cherlings, the beautiful, beautiful Jonas, and Vandro, Monica, Alex, Oil of Hope, Jim, Simha, Rulio, Amish. We can find outstanding cannibals too, like Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Linux, and Aldius, Noctilus, John, Eshep. And Gamatron. <gasps> mm. Bye, Frank. Y'all crazy people. Bye, Frank. <laughs> they, they beamed him up. And thanks to all the people stopping to us, following on Twitch. He, it's good stuff. Frank doesn't have a... Frank's got an F shift. That's how you can tell how fast he's going. <laughs> yeah. It's like a Doppler, Doppler effect. I don't even it's know. A doppel, it's, it's a Doppler effect. A yep. Doppel factor. Doppel factor. It, it's I had a Doppel factor 12. Factor. Yes. Damn it. That's exactly where I was going. <laughs> Died by everyone. We'll see you next week. Five dudes.